Hello and welcome. You may have heard of diabetes or know someone who has been diagnosed with the condition. Perhaps you're living with it yourself, or maybe diabetes is brand new to you. In this video, we are going to discuss what diabetes is and what the risk factors are for developing it. So, let's begin. Diabetes is a condition in which the body either cannot produce insulin or cannot properly use the insulin it does produce. What is insulin, you might be asking? Insulin is a hormone produced by an organ called the pancreas that controls the amount of glucose or sugar in the blood. We can't live without insulin. The body needs it to help store sugar to be used as energy. When the amount of sugar in the blood is too high, over time it can damage different parts of the body and lead to health complications. Right now, in Canada, millions of people are living with this condition. It affects people of all ages. And while there is currently no cure for diabetes, it can be very well managed, allowing people to live full lives. Now let's talk about the different types of diabetes and what sets them apart from one another. There are two main classifications of diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. There are other, less common forms of the condition that people can be diagnosed with outside of type 1 and type 2. You may have also heard of gestational diabetes and prediabetes. We'll explore those too. Let's begin with type 1 diabetes. This is an autoimmune condition that accounts for about 5 to 10% of all diabetes. And in these cases, people are unable to produce insulin. That's why you may have also heard it described as insulin-dependent diabetes. It used to be referred to as juvenile diabetes because type 1 diabetes generally develops earlier in life, in childhood or adolescence, though we know that people can be diagnosed with type 1 at any age, including in adulthood. People living with type 1 diabetes require insulin to live, which can be administered through injections or a pump. Healthy behaviors, monitoring, education, and support are also key to the management of type 1 diabetes. About 90 to 95 percent of all people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. In this case, the body either doesn't produce enough insulin or it cannot properly use the insulin it makes or both. This type usually develops in adulthood, but type 2 is also being diagnosed in children and adolescents more commonly now. The management of type 2 diabetes involves healthy behaviors, education, support, and often monitoring and medication. You may be familiar with gestational diabetes, which is a temporary form of the condition that occurs during pregnancy in 3 to 20% of people. Gestational diabetes ends at the time of delivery, but the risk of developing type 2 diabetes increases after having gestational diabetes. So it's important to regularly screen for the condition in the years following. The management of gestational diabetes involves healthy behaviors, monitoring, education, support, and often medication. It's also important to make note of prediabetes. This is a condition that, as the name suggests, often comes before type 2 diabetes. It occurs when a person's blood sugar is higher than normal but not high enough to constitute a type 2 diabetes diagnosis. Healthy behaviors can often help to keep prediabetes from progressing to type 2 diabetes and can even get rid of prediabetes altogether. Now that you know what diabetes is and how it affects people, you may be wondering what causes this condition in the first place. First, let's discuss what diabetes is not caused by. It is not caused by eating too much sugar. It is not caused by a lack of exercise. It is not caused by being overweight. Nobody gives themselves or loved one diabetes. And broadly speaking, there is no single event, behavior, or occurrence that causes diabetes. If you live with this condition, please remember that it's not your fault. Blaming and shaming yourself or others for their diabetes doesn't feel good. No one wants it, and it's not something people bring upon themselves or cause in others. Experts don't fully know why some people develop the condition or how it happens. And there is no common cause for all cases of diabetes. There are some risk factors that can increase a person's chance of developing it, such as age, ethnicity, family history, and personal health history. But there is no single factor or a combination of factors that will always lead to the condition. At this time, scientists know more about the risk factors for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes than for type 1 diabetes. 
If you are interested in assessing your own diabetes risk, check out the Canadian Diabetes Risk Questionnaire or CanRisk. You can find it by visiting www.diabetes.ca and entering CanRisk in the search bar. Diabetes Canada is committed to improving the quality of life for all Canadians living with diabetes. We work to reduce the risks associated with the condition, help those affected by diabetes to live healthy lives, and support research to find a cure. For more information about diabetes, please visit www.diabetes.ca. You can also email questions to info at diabetes.ca or call 1-800-BANTING, 1-800-226-8464. We are here to help.